Hello everybody, this is uh, Dom from Upstate Supernatural. Uh, I have uh, a great honor tonight. Uh, I have the India Paranormal Team, uh, which is uh, here with us uh, right now. Uh, one of the other individuals is uh, trying to join in. Um, if you can try to... Oh, actually I got the option. Go like that. Uh, I should be able to get in. And we're just uh, trying to get one of the... Uh, there's two guests that will be with us tonight. We're trying to get both of them in at the same time. But uh, for all, all our viewers and so forth, uh, don't forget to uh, check out uh, the description below. You can find out more information about the Indian... Uh, paranormal team uh, they're from India and uh, they do they're doing great things in the field uh, we'll get more in detail about everything that they're doing in just uh, just a few minutes just trying to get all the, the technical difficulties taken care of uh, but I'd like to give a few shout outs for certain inv individuals that are watching right now we have uh, Joey the Dark Walker, Dover Paratech, DJ Lightbeats, Fart Warrior, Starry Night, Magic 51, Cheryl. Happy birthday to you, Cheryl. Uh, and quite a few others. Uh, Nikki Paranormal. Uh, don't forget to check out her show tomorrow night on LiveParanormal.com. Uh, every Sunday, 10 p.m. with uh, Jenna with a J. And if you'd like to uh, kind of let everybody know uh, who you are, I know we're waiting for uh, your partner to come in as well. Um, but if yeah. you'd like to uh, let everybody know who you are. Yeah, sure. Uh, it's uh, me, Akshay Stryker. I'm uh, the founder of uh, Indian Paranormal Team. And... Uh, I also have uh, Sarvajit Mohanji with me, and he's also a uh, founder of Indian Paranormal Team. So we both have started this team in India as a result of a lot of people wanted to know about the paranormal and uh, get in detail scientific knowledge about it. So we used spirituality, which is the base of uh, the paranormal in India and uh, we mix it with science which they wanted so that's how Indian paranormal team came up and we have since been doing a lot of research on spirituality and science together in the field of paranormal and uh, typically we uh, I ask uh, a few questions uh, right off the bat and then afterwards uh, we kind of pull some questions from the uh, the individuals that are in the chat that are watching um, if you'd like to hold off a little bit uh, until he comes in or I mean I can start asking some of the questions uh, the first question is pretty simple which you already had had done which was uh, tell your name uh, the group that you're with okay. um, and then uh, the next one is uh, how long have you been investigating in the paranormal uh I have been investigating for two years with Indian Paranormal Team and uh, spirituality and uh, investigations, the personal investigations which I used to do uh, have been going on for approximately uh, six to seven years now. And uh, what, whatever caused you to become interested uh, in the field of ghost hunting? Uh, well, what was uh, was there a moment that kind of pushed you to become interested, or a certain event that yeah. happened? Yeah, exactly. Uh, there's always a push which we get, and everybody has their push moment when they come into paranormal. So for me, it was uh, when I actually saw a spirit uh, in my room, and for the first time when I saw that, I was shit scared, and I said. I don't know what this is. I just have to get rid of. It. So my my mom is a past life regression therapist. So I actually uh, spoke to her and she helped me to release the spirit. 
later on now uh, I developed my own ways to release spirits and perform exorcisms as well so that's how I started my own personal journey and for Sarvajit uh, he actually he was also scared of spirits and one day suddenly he decided that uh, okay I need to find out what, where exactly this um, fear comes from and why exactly is he afraid of things so he actually made up his uh, plans and he actually thought uh, okay I'm going to study about it and let the people know and that's how we are over here because we both were scared of spirits before we know what a normal person can go through and a normal common man who has seen a lot of movies and heard a lot of stories about spirits which are mostly negative so I, we, we both know what goes on in their mind and what the reality is because we have studied a lot on this and I am a, a certified paranormal uh, investigator and Sarvajit is a certified uh, demonologist so we both know what exactly uh, is there beyond this world and it, it actually helps us to help other people likewise Uh, next question I have is there is there a particular story um, that kind of it was you know maybe uh, scary or maybe uh, something that uh, that happened to you uh, that you felt was very interesting that you would love to share uh, to individuals in the field yeah uh, we have been on many investigations together and uh, alone as well so uh, there's this one particular story which uh, we usually tell and which happened to me uh, in the outskirts of Pune it was uh, really spooky I had learned that they don't attack you're not uh, and nothing happens to you so I had that mindset in mind that nothing is going to happen happen to me and I was kind of a brave heart going into a place uh, in a hilly area outside Pune where I live so I just parked my vehicle along with uh, a five uh, member group I had taken all these people along with me they were just friends not from the Indian paranormal team as such but uh, I had another friend of mine uh, from Indian paranormal team and it was we both and five others so we just stood there uh, in a hilly area and we parked our car and I saw I saw an apparition uh, cross the road so I gathered my gadgets and ran behind it so after going a distance into the forest uh, in the hilly area I came across a, a depleted uh, bungalow actually and it had no roof so what I did was uh, I clicked photographs of uh, the bungalow from all the sides which I could and I said uh, okay fine I'll go ahead and investigate inside because I saw the photographs and there were three graves inside the uh, bungalow so I said uh, okay fine let me go and check what is inside so as the, the moment I set a foot inside uh, a slab, a cement slab of approximately 8 by 2 fell right in front of my feet from rustling from the woods so I did not know where it came from and it directly uh, came from the trees it had no roof, nothing was there and it actually fell right in front of my uh, feet so it was quite uh, a warning that they did not like us over there so we had to rush back because we have never been able to uh, see a spirit or anything move such heavy things before so that was one uh, in Pune and then again we had uh, a few more moments which we really loved in Bhubaneswar so we went to the most haunted location in Bhubaneswar near the Bhubaneswar airport 
uh, along with a few uh, press people uh, who wanted to see how we investigate the paranormal. So we said, uh, okay, fine. And they wanted to interview and know about us. So I said, uh, this would be a great way to know about us when we are doing actual our actual work. So we were actually trying to communicate with the spirits over there, but uh, there wasn't uh, much interaction over there. We tried to use echo walks, uh, EVPs, and a lot of other things, cell sensors and all, but uh, there weren't much uh, replies. So we thought of uh, triggering uh, a fire over there because the house was burned. So as soon as we started a small fire in a place, in a room, we did hear some sounds and uh, it actually freaked out uh, the people who were uh, from the press. So these two stories are one of our favorites and they go down as one of our favorite investigations. Yeah, that sounds very, very interesting. Um, I do keep noticing that uh, anytime he's calling in, the the connection does go very, uh, very weak. I'm wondering if it's actually his uh, his connection. Possibly, uh, is there a way he uh, does he have like a smartphone that he could call in through through Skype on that? Uh, he he does have a smartphone. Uh, <clears throat> I mean that. It may not be uh, with video, but it, I think it would at least get him in. Yeah. Um, there, there's definitely tons of questions popping up in the chat, uh, which uh, later on in the show we'll definitely uh, try to touch base on those. Um, uh, one I, I kind of would like to ask right away, though, is... Uh, you know, a lot of us in uh, you know the United States or even Canada or, or you know England, uh, every uh, every country kind of has their own uh, view on the paranormal. Um, what what is the view in uh, India? Uh, do people welcome it, or is it kind of you know it, what, what's the view that uh, you guys have over there? Uh, so you, most of the people over here are skeptics. And they usually don't uh, understand much about the paranormal, and they mix it up with uh, the usually uh, the black magic and uh, the occult practices, which it isn't. So we actually face a lot of trouble while we are going out and doing our work, because they think that we are doing something bad for the society. So we actually have to explain them and uh, do things. No, that's oh, a, but, yeah, that's very interesting. I mean, I, I keep seeing that in the chat. Everybody's like, I'm just curious how how well received paranormal is in India. You know, comparatively to to other countries. Uh, in England, uh, you know, I, I've spoken to quite a few individuals, and I mean. It's popular, but the uh, the economy kind of try tries to charge a lot for investigating locations. Uh, the United States is starting to turn that way, but it seems a little more welcome. You know, there there's so many teams in a in the United States, uh, and then Canada, it's kind of frowned upon. A lot of the a lot of the different uh, you know providences, they you know they. Same as uh, what you just said, you know, they're afraid that it's going to cause some sort of damage. It's going to cause some sort of uh, negative aspect in the country. Yes, it is uh, somewhat like that in India as well. Uh, we have uh, institutions in India who actually oppose anything which relates to spirits or anything which is supernatural and they say that it does not exist they are blindfolded actually and we actually don't know how to counter them because whenever we tell them to come on live TV and uh, talk about it uh, they won't agree but the moment we do anything for the good of the people or 
we try to help people with the investigations and stuff they would directly come into uh, the newspapers and say okay the, these guys are practicing uh, black magic and they are trying to harm the society and the culture this is not uh, what we accept over here so this is going against the law and against india mm -hmm. so that that is how uh, these people are when asked to come directly uh, face to face over a chat in the news channel or something they won't come huh. uh, they'll they'll surely say things at you through media when you're not uh, available to chat Uh, we uh, thought we had him there for a second there. <laughs> Looked like we did. Um, it's, it, it's, it, if anything, I mean, we can try to reschedule so he all we can interview him as well. You know, do a part two of the interview. Uh, which, whichever. You know, I I'd, I'd like to get his view as well. Yes. So. Yes. I I would personally like him to be online as well. And uh, he actually uh, was actually asking if uh, it was possible if he called in through Hangouts. Uh, Google Hangout. Yeah. 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 I could do that. Um, yep. Um, just uh, give me a few seconds. Um, do you have me on uh, Google Plus? I, I'm fairly confident you guys probably do. Um, I just want to make sure to. I don't think uh, I may be able to do it actually as we're speaking. Alright, let me see. Yeah, we can do that. I'll try to do it right now without uh, doing the video. Well, I'm not doing the video aspect anyway. Um, go ahead and uh, stay in uh, stay in the Skype for the moment. Uh, just sure, sure. just um, until I set up the, uh, the Google Hangout. Oh, he already uh, he already started one. Okay. Uh, let me see. Uh, click there for video call. Okay, I'm uh, I'm in the Google Hangout right now. Yeah, I'm I'm over there as well. Okay, so we're all three of us are in there. Yes. Okay. All right, I'll end this call and then we'll just switch right over to Google Hangout. Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh. Yep. So at last I got some way to connect. It's Sarbajit here. Uh, no, I do not see him in here yet. Sorry, I couldn't get you. Uh, let me... uh yeah, I don't, I don't see him in here yet. Uh, yes, I am Sarbachit. I uh, tried connecting you through Google Hangouts because my Skype showing some problem here. Right. Yeah, I don't. I don't see your partner in here yet, though. So. It... Akshay is it, uh, online through Skype, and I am here through gang Google Hangouts. Is it okay? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We can do that. Uh, just give me a second. Let me. Uh... Yeah. Um... Because uh, the Skype is showing some problem out here, so I thought of uh, contacting you through Google Hangouts. Okay. Yeah, I want to make sure I got him. Uh... Can you hear me as well? Uh, can, sure. can, can you both hear uh, me? Yes, yeah. I can hear you. Uh, sure. Uh, yeah, you? I can hear you. So are you there? Yeah, I heard it. Yeah, yeah, he's there, but uh, 
His voice is too low. Uh, yeah, uh, there's not, I don't have a way that I can, uh, get it so you can hear him as well on the same. Yeah, there's no way I can I, do that unless, unless he joins into the Google Hangout, which we should be able to do that as well. Yes, I added just, uh, Akshay just right now, and, uh, we both are right now, so uh, let's see. Joined in the call okay, on Google Hangouts. Uh, okay, well. here too. Okay, perfect. All right, I'm gonna yeah. end that this way. All right, we should have uh, everybody in here, right? Yes. Alrighty. Uh, I mean, I can ask uh, pretty much the same questions I already asked. Uh, he already answered uh, quite a few of them. Um, but uh, if you, you would like to let us know what your name is, uh, you're with uh, Indian Paranormal Team. But uh, if you could yes. uh, kind of give an introduction of uh, who you are, I'd appreciate that. Mm -hmm. So, uh, it's, uh, we, uh, Akshay and uh, me, Sarbachit, are the founders of the Indian Paranormal Team. And um, I'm a certified uh, demonologist from the U.S. And uh, I've been researching in this field. Uh, it's been uh, four years. And uh, um, to in 2013, uh, along with Akshay Stalika, we um, bought the Indian Paranormal Team. And right now we have 18 members spread across the country and a branch in the U.K., United Kingdom, headed by our friend Dian Kyo. Very, very cool. Uh, the other question that I asked was, uh, how long have uh, you personally been investigating? Uh, he he kind of already uh, explained it a little bit. Um, if uh, if you ask me personally, then uh, uh, I've been in this field for over three years, and I've been investigating the paranormal uh, by moving uh, across the country in my straight in. Uh, Wherever, uh, like we also do private investigations whenever we get a case from someone or any part of the country. And uh, Akshay Salika handles the spiritual part of the team, so he also joins me in uh, all the investigations that we conduct. All right, and then uh, the next question is uh, whatever caused you uh, to be interested in the field of ghost hunting? Uh, sorry, I couldn't get you. Uh, what, please repeat that. What uh, what what caused you to become interested in the paranormal? Uh, yes, uh, actually, it all started uh, four years ago. When um, actually, I was uh, I was scared of uh, darkness and all other uh, all other uh, supernatural things that people say about uh, may be fake or true. So to overcome my fear, I started researching about it. I started researching that why do people fear from the unknown or from the darkness? And that's how I got into this field. Uh, to overcome my fear, to research uh, that uh, why people are fearing from the unknown and how to overcome it, I came into this field. Uh, and this question is actually to both you guys. Um, about mm -hmm. how, how many investigations uh, would you guys say you've been on? Uh, yeah, uh, for me, I have been on more than uh, 50 to uh, 100 uh, investigations. Uh, but with Indian Paranormal Team, we have done approximately 20, 25. Oh, okay. Uh, it is it is uh, mainly a low key thing over here because um, it's kind of a taboo in India and they don't yeah. easily uh, come ahead and talk to us. And uh, you both no. are you both are roughly about the same with uh, the amount of cases, uh, like with the uh, investigations. You both probably been on around close to fifty to a hundred. Yes, we both have uh, 
then approximately together. 50 to 100. Okay. And we have been investigating together for the past uh, two years now. Oh, okay. Uh, during an investigation, is there certain equipment uh, that you guys prefer to use? Uh, a lot of individuals like to use K2 meters, uh, video cameras, surveillance system, uh, voice recorders, thermals. Uh, what what are what is the equipment that you guys prefer to use? Uh, we usually use uh, cell sensors rather than K2 meters because uh, it helps us uh, to communicate better with the spirit world. Then we use uh, EVP recorders and laser grids. Then uh, uh, there's another uh, EMF meter which only calcul uh, it which only shows uh, if there's a uh, electrical leakage. Actually, uh, that's the fault of that. Uh, there's a meter which does not actually capture anything uh, which is a low which has a low electronic uh, frequency, electromagnetic frequency. So we said uh, most of the electrical leaks are of high frequency. So we use that to determine whether most probably it can be from some electrical uh, source or not. We have taken that negative aspect of it into a positive and use that as well. And then we, have, of course, have uh, Echo Vox, EVR, and uh, Danny's uh, awesome apps, which he makes for all the people in the uh, paranormal community. Uh, I I didn't catch what you were saying there, uh, Suburbs. Uh, yes, uh, like okay, I said. We use all these uh, devices, but the problem out here is uh, that in India, people don't, I, I will not believe, but they take paranormal negative way, in, um, means uh, they think uh, we are occult uh, magicians or some occult dealers when we say that we are paranormal investigators. So no one uh, deals with uh, devices out here in India, so we have to order all our devices from the USA or abroad. So we have uh, the big uh, equipment as well as some uh, highly techno devices too. But uh, yes, uh, it's a bit a uh, kind of difficult thing to order the devices because we do not find it. Uh, we do not find it here in our country. Yeah, I, I honestly, uh, that that would definitely sound like it's a challenge uh, for sure. Uh, I do know a couple yeah. Canadians that have a tough time with uh, trying to get. Uh, some some equipment as well. Um, like uh, in the, like uh, we have in the USA or in the UK or in the country, the paranormal is a bit exposed. Like people, uh, some people ex uh, ex um, accept that yes, uh, there is something called paranormal science or parapsychology or paranormal. But in India, people are like blindly believe that no they don't exist even if they exist then there's no scientific base to it no scientific proof to it so it's like a challenge to us uh, being in India uh, c continuing with our research on the paranormal basically uh, they are extremists either they believe in them and then they say okay spirits are bad and you have to worship God to get rid of spirits and they are going to they are going to harm you and all those things. Otherwise they don't believe it at all. Huh. There are two sides to India. And we are the ones who are trying to get both the sides together somewhere in the middle to show the truth. What exactly is there? I've uh, I've asked this question numerous times. Um Basically, uh, a generalization in, in uh, the United States is a lot of individuals, uh, they either like to go in for the investigation or they like to go over the footage. Uh, the reason I actually switched that apart is, uh, you know, there is rare rarities where people like to do both. But uh, in, uh, in our society, per se, there's, there's a majority of individuals that are, 
you know, they're they're in for the rush of the investigation. But to do the the brunt of the work and going through the footage isn't always there. Um, so my question is, uh, what what do you find to be the greatest part of doing an investigation? Is it finding the location? Is it doing the investigation? Or is it uh, going through the findings? Uh, we usually, what we usually do is uh, we get to know about locations from the people and then we go in and investigate the place and then we go through the footage as well but we really enjoy uh, everything during the investigations because everything happens at that time and we have a lot of psychics uh, in our team who pick up on things and then we have to uh, see and get what exactly they are talking about and we have to find out exactly where the spirit is what he's trying to communicate and if possible try to release it so investigating the place uh, is fun and later on uh, while going through the footage to actually see what exactly the, the psychics had put uh, got and to exactly get video evidence of it it feels good when we have good evidence of a good scientific evidence of a spirit being over there along with a psychic uh, getting a clue about it uh, was there anything uh, that uh, he may want to add into it still here with us right yeah yes I was just seeing if there's anything uh, yes. he, he'd like to add in as well uh, yes uh, uh, actually um, in uh, if uh, you have ever heard then India is a spiritual country you might have heard it so our team is a blend of spirituality and science we try to prove the spiritual things we keep spirituality as a base and prove it scientifically so our team consists of psychic mediums who handle the spiritual part and we have also members who go through the scientific readings or scientific researches so like Akshay said we have psychic mediums so uh, when we conduct an investigation the psychic mediums mark the hotspot or the cold spot out there in the in a location and after work is done the scientific uh, team takes on the place with a device scientific devices and proves their finding and uh, yes if we if we get any footage then uh, it's a great thing because of if we are finding something then it's a great thing for the paranormal community as uh, we are getting some footage that proves uh, the paranormal existence uh, for for any new individuals uh, new people that may be interested in joining uh, in the field in the paranormal is there any tips or uh, things especially in your country uh, that you could give them uh, as uh, as a helpful hint or a helpful trick uh, to get into this field yes uh, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead. Uh, yeah, so uh, there are many out here who think that uh, investigating normal is fun or dealing with energy is fun. But uh, I would like to say that personally, if you are going to deal with the spirits or energies or whatever you say, please have proper knowledge about it. It's not about fun. It's all about if you are an investigator, there's a different, uh, difference between a ghost hunter and a paranormal investigator. A ghost hunter is all about finding the apparitions and all. It doesn't uh, go uh, through the researches, uh, research, researches and all. But if you are a paranormal investigator, then I will say that please have a proper knowledge about the things that you are going to investigate as they are not to play with. These are real things. We are doing real and serious work. So if you are joining, if someone is trying to join the paranormal community, have proper knowledge properly search on it and then get into it yeah that is uh, the same view which I have that people should have proper knowledge about uh, the paranormal before they get into this and uh, to help people with this because 
when we started over here, uh, we did not get much support from uh, anybody except uh, I was there to support uh, server and uh, vice versa. So we both actually uh, started to research on it and speak to various people across uh, the seas. And that's how we actually uh, came to know about the paranormal, the scientific side of it. We had heard about the spiritual side in India, and we came to know about the scientific side from uh, the Western uh, Western counterparts. So we have blended both and made it into a course at the Indian Paranormal Team Academy, which we have started in Mumbai. And we are trying to... Uh, train people who actually want to learn about paranormal and are serious about learning about paranormal over here and that's how we train them we actually uh, started a classroom based paranormal investigations course where we actually teach them how to handle the gadgets how to go on investigations and we actually show them how to investigate holding their hands so that later on in life they don't face any problems and they do beautiful research ahead. Uh, for for your group in general, uh, what is your viewpoint on uh, spirit boxes? Uh, do you feel they work? I mean, uh, the Echo Box could be classified as a spirit box as well. But uh, in general, uh, what what do you guys feel about spirit boxes? Are they useful in the field? Or uh, do you think EVP is uh, probably a stronger suit? See, uh, EVPs are a much more better uh, parts of evidences. Though communication is becoming easier due to spirit boxes as well. Okay, uh, we do understand that uh, there can be times where we might be matrixing and we might be making up things which are going on in our mind to uh, get answers and there are some sounds coming from that side and we are trying to get uh, answers or making up answers which we hear the selected sounds uh, in the ghost box and we make up something and that's an answer for us so that can happen many a times but uh, we have seen that we do get uh, good proofs and answers of uh, things and uh, we had actually demonstrated that uh, on a show previously where we actually communicated with a spirit and gave answers to people about their person, personal lives. All right. Um, in, in all these questions, you both can, uh, you're both more than welcome to answer as well. Um, what about Ouija boards? Uh, what is your viewpoint on uh, the Ouija board? A lot of investigators uh, will say, I would say it's about a 50 50. Um, most investigators will say, don't use it at all. Other investigators uh, will say that. Uh, you know, you can use it. It's more the intent. It's just a tool. Um, what What do you guys feel about them? Uh, no. Yeah, Ouija actually is uh, not bad if you know how to use it and how to deal with spirits. But if you don't, uh, you should know that you're opening a portal. Their spirit, you're calling in spirits. So they are going to come. They are going to communicate with you. And who knows if uh, at all they are going to go back or not because you are not known you don't know how to release them or send send them back so it is good that uh, if you know how to use a Ouija board and you are using it but if you don't know how to use a Ouija board or you are not into paranormal you are doing it for the first time uh, I would say that be guided from somebody uh, who knows how to use it before you actually get into it what I believe uh, that uh, why many investigators say that Ouija board is uh, dangerous is because when we call in a spirit, we don't know which type of spirit we're getting in. It's a, an evil spirit or a normal one. If uh, And we don't know what we are calling in because we still now 
after so many years of research we still don't know what is there on the other side and uh, that's why many investigators say that if you are using the wish award then and it's harmful then i guess it's the only reason because we don't know what we are calling no great uh great uh outlook on that i definitely agree with both you guys uh what uh what would you uh both say is probably the worst thing you've ever came across in the field uh you know i i like to ask that question so people do get the reality of you know sometimes it's it can be dangerous uh, I'm just curious, uh, you know, what what is the worst thing you guys have come across in the field? Uh, see, we don't feel uh, any danger as such in the paranormal because uh, we believe that uh, spirits were humans too. And uh, I personally have a spirit and a body and the spirit in front of me just has a spirit. So naturally I've got something more than him more than the spirit so yeah of course I should be more powerful than him and uh, he should not be able to cross his boundaries and I will not cross my own uh, to disturb him we are we are individuals we are we have our own energies and we'll be working uh, for the best possible way not to uh, disturb each other but help each other and uh, take humanity and uh, the knowledge to another level. So I don't think that paranormal as such is uh, dangerous at all, but having knowledge about paranormal is important because you should know what your boundaries are and that is what the paranormal actually teaches. Uh, is there anything uh, that you'd like to add as well uh, into that? Um, yes, like uh... Okay, I said uh, that uh, there is no such danger as uh, they were. Uh, we have a physical body. We have our spirit. We have our own energies. We have our own energies. So if uh, we are encountering or encountering with some evil spirit, then we should know that yes, we are more powerful than the spirit because we have a physical body, and the one we are encountering is just a simple energy that we are dealing with. So if one knows how to deal uh, as such in such in such situations and uh, I don't feel there's any danger to the paranormal uh, what what do you feel uh, is the theory of why or how ghosts exist I mean you kind of did explain that that you believe that they are uh, people that have passed away uh, is there more beyond that like uh, why why do they exist uh, if a person dies, uh, is it a choice to pass on? I mean, what? I'm just curious what you guys have as a theory for uh, why or how a ghost exists. Uh, now, yes, uh, there is this metaphysical theory as a survival hypo hypothesis, which says that after a person dies, its consciousness and personality never dies. Or, in simpler words, uh, a, pers a person's uh, personality and, cause and consciousness survives physical death. So this is the theory that uh, we use uh, to, uh, which makes us believe that yes, after death, um, uh, a person's energy or uh, you may say the soul remains uh, on this earth realm, and uh, that is how we link the science uh, thing with it uh, as uh, metaphysics is a broadly accepted subject uh, and is a part of science so when metaphysics says that yes there is something uh, there is a theory or survival hypothesis which says that the personality survives so we guess it's the only thing uh, that uh, not the only thing i will say but uh, yes it gives an idea that after a person dies uh, his or her energies is left and uh... yeah exactly uh, see everything uh, is based on energy and energy and is yeah energies and frequencies and actually as uh, it is st uh, stated in physics that energy cannot be created nor be destroyed it remains constant so where actually uh, does the spirit or the energy which lies inside the human body go after it dies 
So that same energy is what we uh, usually call spirits and uh, energies. That, that, that is what we believe in. Okay. Um, and then the last question I have for you uh, personally, and then we'll go to the chat. Um, were you guys ever skeptics? You know, like uh, did not believe at all. Uh, I always say, were you ever a skeptic or per se a non-believer? Every investigator I talk to always says they are skeptical in investigating. A skeptic would never investigate because a skeptic cannot, you know, they, they can't change their view. So, um, would you... Yeah, we have, yeah, we have more of an uh, agnostic view to okay. it. Because, uh, see, we believe what we see and we believe what if we get proofs of it. So, as paranormal investigators, if somebody says that this place is haunted and it has a lot of spirits and this is bad, you don't come back when you go, uh, when you go there, you, don't, you just don't return from that place. So, we don't believe that. But uh, we do believe in energies because we have come across energies and we go there, we investigate. If we find proofs, uh, then we say, okay, it is haunted and uh, yes, there are energies. But if we don't, we simply state that, uh, okay, we did not find any energies of our, uh, over there, neither did uh, any of our gadgets pick up anything. So according to us, uh, there might be no spirits over there and that there's nothing to worry about. Alright, uh, I mean that was the last question that I had for uh, my personal questions to you guys. Uh, the chat is actually very, uh, very curious. Um, there was a statement that was kind of said early on about being certified uh, in demonology or in general of paranormal. Um, how was a person certified? Uh, in the in the United States, we have no certification for that. Our government doesn't sanction it as a, a field that they feel pertains to getting a certification. I'm just curious for any individuals interested. How how can you uh, become certified uh, in the paranormal? Uh, see, uh, none of the governments uh, would be actually uh, eager to accept that uh, anything of the spiritual nature or spiritual or supernatural nature exists because that goes against uh, science which a lot of people uh, accept openly so if the government goes against the people they won't like it so usually they don't uh, allow such things and as I said in India as well we have these communities which openly oppose us and uh, we are trying to uh, prove them wrong. So that is how it goes that we are trying to certify, certify our own people from our academy and uh, it is a certification from our end giving an assurance to the people of our country that uh, okay this guy has studied about the paranormal, has in-depth knowledge about it and is actually uh, uh, able to investigate using scientific techniques and can handle the gadgets and so on. So that is what the certification is about. Okay, and, no, uh, that, it's uh, not recognized by a government. Of course. No, I, I, uh, I really, uh, I, I can't tell you enough how much I uh, commend you guys for creating an academy. You know, for creating a, a form of a school, uh, especially Thanks. in in your country where it's kind of frowned upon. Uh, you know, I mean, that, that takes a lot of courage, and uh, I do admire that uh, that strength to uh, strength and dedication and passion for the field to try to teach individuals that are interested um, more about it. I, I think that's highly commendable. Uh, Thank you. I, another uh, question that popped in the chat uh, is, uh, does your group rely on technology, or do you approach the paranormal from a spiritual perspective and uh, is that a common approach in India? You guys did kind of answer that somewhat. Um, uh, yes, we just did that. Uh, we just said that we our team is a our team is a blend of science and spirituality. So right. we also take the spirituality part and also prove it through the technology. 
Now, is there uh, is there certain equipment uh, that you guys actually use in India uh, that's uh, that's rare? You know, uh, that you guys have in India and uh, people in the United States would have to order instead of uh, you guys ordering from from us. You know, I'm just curious. Is, is there tools uh, in your area that are specific uh, only to India? No, there aren't any. Uh, actually, all the paranormal gadgets and all these things, the technical part of uh, the paranormal, actually, we have to get it everything from uh, India, uh, from the U.S. and the U.K. because uh, nothing is found in India. We have recently started to get uh, IR thermometer, the laser gun, uh, laser guns over here, and uh, laser thermometers over here, but. Uh, yeah. We hardly get uh, EMF meters and stuff in India, so we have to order it from the UK and the US. Now, your your viewpoint on the paranormal, uh, how many groups would you say are in India that do the paranormal? I mean, is that is your perspective of doing it uh, exactly how you guys do it? Is that a norm? Is that a normal uh, normal perspective for other teams in India as well? Uh, no, actually, uh, many are completely spiritual, uh, and uh, there are a few who are completely scientific because they want to debunk the paranormal. And then, as I said, there there are extremes completely. There are some people who want to debunk the paranormal. That's why they are using scientific gadgets and all those things completely uh, based on science they are trying to prove that spirits do not exist and there are spiritual people who are uh, only into religion and uh, stuff and they are not much into paranormal but they are more into religion and spirituality and they say that okay we are investigating the paranormal but actually uh, they are only a bunch of psychics who do not use any scientific gadgets and they go in, they try to communicate and uh, cleanse a place but we have found some a way to blend both where we can we have psychics who get uh, information and the scientific part where uh, we actually can prove that uh, okay whatever the psychics have picked up is true now, uh, you did talk earlier about using the Echo Box. Is there other uh, application-based software that you use as well uh, beyond uh, the Echo Box? Is there other forms of software that you've tried out? Uh, um, except uh, Echo Box, we use CVR, and uh, these uh, we trust the applications ma uh, made by Daniel or Danny Big Bird because uh, we have seen his applications uh, tested by many investigators. Uh, we, uh, uh, Danny had asked uh, us personally to beta test uh, the Ecovox 3 that he launched some months ago. So we know that Ecovox and uh, all his apps uh, works perfectly and uh, that's why you, we use them. I, I, yeah, I've, I've used uh, Danny's apps as well. I mean, I do the series uh, Spirit Box Weekly. I test out different applications. Uh, yes. e Echovox, I've gotten some outstanding results with. Um, e Extreme Senses uh, software, I've gotten some crazy, crazy responses that were very relevant. Um, but that's that's just me personally. Um, As Ecovox always surprises. Uh, the e, e Extreme Senses is a is a Canadian developer. Uh, and Dan okay. Danny uh, develops the apps, I believe, in uh, uh, the New England uh, area of the United States. Yes. Yeah, I'm sure he is. Yeah. Uh, and actually, I have a curiosity, and I'm not, I'm not trying to be rude in any aspect. Um, you uh, earlier stated with the, uh, with the paranormal, uh, you don't feel there's a lot of... Uh, bad things that are out there it's just more or less trying to give people the knowledge um what i'm uh, about to ask is uh if there isn't a lot of negative or, or bad things out there uh why learn about demonology 
uh, I mean, is uh, is the demonology? It's just more or less a curiosity, um, you know. Uh, with being a demonologist, uh, do you believe in angels and demons, or you know, how, how does that develop? I'm just very curious. Uh, now the the reason why we uh, we thought of uh, pursuing a course on demonology is because demonology is a complete spiritual course. It's a, it's a complete spiritual part of paranormal demonology. It's all about demons, all about angels, and all about uh, the spiritual part. The reason we uh, took up the course is because we as a team, we as Indian paranormal team, our work is to prove the spiritual things in a scientific way. So to prove the demonic happenings or the demonology things in a scientific way, we need to know that what happens in the spiritually paranormal. So the reason uh, behind it was to take up the course and to know what happens in the demonology part and then prove it uh, through our scientific um, researches or part. Absolutely beautiful. Uh, you know, I mean, that, that's that's what a lot of people out in the field don't understand with the demonology is it's it's more than just demons you know it is the angelic and i i appreciate you letting everybody know uh that aspect uh if there's anybody uh that's viewing that has any more questions uh feel free or if you guys have any announcements of uh any upcoming shows or uh any upcoming projects uh that you guys uh will be releasing uh go ahead and give them a shout out go ahead and uh let everybody know what's happening uh, with your team and uh, what what you guys are doing. Yeah. Uh, see, uh, I would like to add one thing to what uh, Sarva said before. Uh, the demonology and stuff actually exists, and uh, actually demons are uh, the naughty spirits which we actually come across sometimes so to handle that we should be able to know what exactly they are and we have to study about them so that is why we took up demonology as well because we want to know what exactly uh, they are how to counter them and uh, this guy Sarbajit uh, he actually is a player audio so he picks up on things so he can communicate Easily, I said. Uh, yeah, he he can actually uh, do that pretty well. And uh, actually, uh, Nikki Paranormal, she popped out with a, a, a great question. Um, from the results of your investigations, uh, if you guys have seen other uh, other shows or other uh, groups with their investigations, uh, do the do the results seem different? Um, one thing we're actually trying to do with one of the uh, shows that I actually do is to see if there's a different uh, dialect uh, with the different spirit boxes. Uh, okay. You know, t testing out, you know, somebody in Canada or in uh, the United Kingdom compared to somebody in the United States, if the dialect changes. Um, I'm just curious if, uh, if your results are different than what you've seen others find. We have got responses in... Uh... Hindi and uh, other regional languages, other Indian regional languages as well, uh, using echo ox. So uh, these are kind of uh, strange things which we have come across through uh, applications, but we did not get uh, much of uh, things on EVP over here. But while on investigations, uh, I read Nikki's. Uh, comment over there and the question is really good so what I would like to say is over there in the US there are a lot of places which are haunted and there are a lot of places which have high activities but in India it's very hard to find those hmm. I wonder what the I, I'm, I'm very curious why I mean that's kind of that, I mean that's a part of the curiosity in the field you know why? Why would it be more active here than over somewhere else? I mean, you're where you guys are probably living is uh, much older in uh, civilization uh, than than our civil civilization over here. So you would think the activity would actually be uh, 
stronger. Yes, actually, um, we were trying to uh, get uh, a lot of. Uh, sorry. We, we were actually trying to get a lot of uh, information on why exactly does it happen that we are not uh, getting enough uh, responses over here. But uh, a lot of the time, uh, what our psychics uh, pick up is uh, okay, shut down the gadgets, they don't like it. And we have heard a lot on EVRs and uh, EVPs. Last time when I went to Mumbai, um, uh, they, I actually got a spirit which said on EVR, shut it, I don't like it. Huh. So Very interesting. So th that's the reason we actually uh, don't get much activities over here. And uh, as you know, uh, getting falsified activities is quite rare everywhere. But uh, there are some places in India that do have portagized activities and we have been there uh, and if uh, if you guys would like to uh, let everybody know where they can find you uh, what what you guys have uh, coming up uh, I mean you have the the Academy that you guys are working on um, you know any information that you guys would like to put out there uh, for anybody to be able to find you or, or know more about you guys yeah, uh, people can find us on uh, our website, which is uh, IndianParanormalTeam.com, and we have given our contact number over there. So, if anybody from India or anywhere in the world needs spiritual guidance or anything from the Indian Paranormal Team, you, you are free to call up, and uh, we also have a form over there which actually reaches to me and Sarvajit and we respond to it uh, within a day or two. We make it a point to respond to each and every mail within a day or two. And yeah. also we have uh, our research panel and we do have a, its website too. It's www.spiroindia.bpwave.in and that's a link to our research website and for the courses when one is interested to take our courses then it is www.iptacademy.wixwix.com slash iptacademy you can go to the website fill up the forms or contact on the contact numbers and enroll for any of the courses Uh, yeah. I, I mean, uh, another curiosity, I mean, you probably see what Nikki just wrote in there. I, it, it really is very odd. I mean, there's uh, uh, the activity difference. Uh, it's very, very odd. Yes. But uh, I, I, maybe, uh, maybe it is because of the belief system. Uh, right. But yeah. uh, we, we, we are more of uh, agnostic people, yeah who actually uh, believe on proofs and uh, for the religions and uh, all those things. I personally, uh, I was a born Hindu, but I don't uh, feel being a Hindu anymore. I'm more of uh, a mix of all religions. I am Islamic, I am Christian, I am Hindu, I am Buddhist. I am from all religions. I love to read about all the religions and their spirituality, because religion proves as the, is a base to spirituality. So I read about all the religions, and uh, at, at home I have uh, idols of uh, Jesus, and then I have uh, a lot of uh, I have Buddhas, and then I have Hindu gods, and all those things. I believe in all religions and I worship all the religions equally. So I don't think that uh, a belief uh, or a religious belief should be hampering what we uh, are trying to get over here. But it might be because uh, 
a lot of uh, positivity and uh, a lot of energy and meditations goes into uh, our regular practice that um, it what we think is the aura might be really strong and that might have scared spirits a bit in coming forward and answering us right yeah that that's true i mean it it, it definitely is very interesting um i mean a, another curiosity is the uh Again, it is the belief system. Uh, I mean, more so. I, what I personally believe for investigating wise is, uh, they are people that passed away, and they're afraid to move on, um, afraid of yeah. uh, afraid of some form of judgment. Um, maybe in in your country, there's a peace of mind when a person uh, passes away, so their spirit doesn't linger. Uh, but it's definitely uh, I, it's something I would. Uh, I'd be obsessed trying to figure that out, <laughs> you know, trying to figure out the theory of, of, of why, you know, that's, that's very interesting. See, uh, people get killed in India uh, due to various reasons and uh, yeah, people die peaceful deaths, of course, but uh, there are many suicides, then murders, uh, all of the uh, accidents and stuff like in any other country but uh, then again uh, a lot of uh, religious things go on for all these people who have passed away and uh, India being a lot uh, India having a lot of ancient stuff with it it has a lot of spiritual uh, background to it a religious yeah, I mean, I, and a yeah I mean there background. could be something that's uh, protecting you know, there could yes, be a, so, an ancient yeah. artifact or, or something in general that uh, isn't even known that it's uh, it's protecting the area. Yeah, yeah. There, there are a lot of uh, priests in India who have been uh, calling into the white light and uh, performing purifications of places. So uh, if anybody dies, we do a purification of a place and uh, performing a puja or a religious practice over there uh, which is more uh, you can link that to uh, shamanic practice because we have fire and a chanting of mantras uh, which goes on and which we believe calls in the white light and the spirit can go through the white light easily so maybe that can be a reason why we are not getting much spirits over here Well, I'd like to thank you guys very much for uh, for coming on. I know it's extremely early for you guys um, in the yeah, morning. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, but we always love to talk about paranormal any time of the day. Definitely a, a great um, great team. Uh, everybody check them out. Uh, you guys have some e excellent excellent views, and uh, you're definitely accomplishing uh, some great things. And I I look forward to uh, seeing what you guys do next. Um, yep. Thank you so much again for uh, for coming on and uh, explaining everything uh, that you could uh, about uh, you know the different views that you guys have and explaining things that I know aren't very knowledgeable out there, uh, especially the demonology aspect and uh, you know the the academy and so forth, how the how the government you know kind of works over yes. in India, uh, but. Uh, you guys are, are doing awesome things. I appreciate uh, the, you know, taking the taking the time to do the interview, and uh, thank you again. Thank, thank you, you too for calling uh, to this calling. awesome show. And uh, any any individuals as well, uh, don't forget to check out uh, Nikki Paranormal show tomorrow night on liveparanormal.com. dot com. Uh, it's at ten o'clock. Uh, it is uh, my paranormal experience. If you guys haven't uh, haven't been on there with her yet, I know it might be that that one might actually work out a little better for you. It would be like seven in the morning for you instead of, you know, four or five. Uh, but uh, it's every uh, every Sunday it would be probably like a Monday morning for you. Um, but just get a hold of Nikki Paranormal or uh, AT Jenna. I'm sure they'd be happy to have you on there or or talk with you. Um, you guys, uh, thanks again. Have a beautiful rest of uh, your weekend, and uh, keep doing what you're doing.
doing awesome things. Thanks, guys. Thank you. And thank you for the questions, Nikki. You're an awesome lady. You know that. <laughs> OK. 